All right, so we were just looking at some review for mechanics. The first thing that we saw in that last one was talking about forces. Uh, the last thing we saw in that previous one was uh, talking about forces, falling objects. So if we've got this marker falling down, you know it's acceleration, 9.8 meters per second squared downwards. And uh, it's pretty straightforward because the only force acting on this would be gravity. And that's the way that we dealt with this, uh, you know, back in our uh, earlier physics class days. What we're going to look at now is what happens if we consider air resistance or drag forces. And so then what we wind up with is downwards there's gravity and upwards there's a drag force. And that drag force will increase until it gets to terminal velocity. So if this was falling at you know 200 miles an hour or whatever, it might have reached terminal velocity. And then what we know is happening is that the drag force is equal to the gravity force. These two would be equal once it makes it to that point where it's not accelerating, it stays at its constant maximum velocity. And so that's one thing we can look at and consider in this case. Uh, however, at the beginning, it's got a very low velocity, so it has a very low drag force as it goes through this object. So at the beginning, we would expect this, constant increase in velocity. Slope of this would be 9.8. And so it would just speed up and speed up and speed up and speed up. But we know that that can't be, that's not possible to consider for, to, to continue forever because then it would be moving uh, at an infinite velocity at some time later. So it needs, to, there needs to be some sort of resistive force and that's the drag force. And here's the thing about drag is that drag force is proportional to the velocity. So as the velocity increases, the drag force increases as well. And actually in air, it goes as V squared. So, uh, but we're not gonna worry too much about that just yet. So we can say drag force gets bigger as the velocity gets bigger. So the net force gets smaller. And when the net force gets smaller, that means the acceleration gets smaller. And so at the very beginning, when the drag force is very small, the acceleration is very close to 9.8, like this. But actually, we see some exponential decay, which is kind of like what we saw with our RC circuits. So we're gonna see some math that's very similar to the RC circuits. Actually, it's, it's the same math. Um, and it comes into play here for air resistance and drag. And so here we've got this drops down and eventually we get zero, uh, zero acceleration. And once we've got zero acceleration, that's when we reach an asymptote. We find our final velocity there, our uh, peak velocity. And so this is one of those ideas of uh, air resistance. So today we've got a worksheet that kind of goes through how to calculate the actual air resistance for an object. Uh, so that's, that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, one last thing I want to take, I'm going to write down here real quick. All right, so we got this equation right here. The sum of the forces is equal to mg minus beta, this is just some constant letter, beta times V. So this is our drag force. It's some constant times V, let's say in this case. And that's gonna be equal to MA. So this is sort of our relationship, and this is actually a differential equation. Differential equation, we'll see how that is in just a second here. All right, so we're back here, and we've got that MG, so this is just a constant, uh, minus beta times V is equal to m dv dt. So this is a differential equation here. We solve this since it's got something, a derivative being equal to itself, uh, it's probably gonna look something like something exponential. And so that's what we're gonna wind up with is an exponential function. And you'll go through that math uh, here today. All right, thanks.